and welcome to my next Miss Have Nut video. As you can see, I'm missing two things at the moment. They're in school and we're going to eat cake. So today you're joining us in the lovely Aberystwyth and we are currently at Aberystwyth Castle, which was destroyed in the 18th century. Not long before it was destroyed, it actually made silver coins for the Royal Mint. Now, another interesting fact about uh, this castle is that in 1988, they actually found a skeleton here who they called Charlie, and I believe he's in Ceredigion Museum. I may be wrong about that one. But if you're a little bit dark and into um, serial killers and whatnot, Charlie was unusual because in the acidic soil of Wales, skeletons quite often don't last. So they believe that he was protected by uh, the building that had fallen upon him. They think he was here when it was raised to the ground and uh, the lime had protected him from the acid in the soil. This is Aberystwyth Castle with beautiful views over Cardigan Bay. And what we're going to do today is we're going to go through town. We're going to go and probably eat some cake or lots of cake. And we're going to show you some of the sites of Aberystwyth. So this building is the old college and it belongs to Aberystwyth University. I actually studied my PGCE here many moons ago. Um, Welsh, sorry, French through the medium of Welsh. Um, it wasn't always a college. So in this building was built sort of around 1873 um, and it was with the advent of the railway coming to Aberystwyth. When the railway came to Aberystwyth, they dubbed it the Beeritz of Wales. So there was a big influx of building hotels and things. And this was actually at the beginning of its life known as the Castle Hotel because it has views of the castle. It's built in a very Gothic style. Please forgive me if I'm wrong and they're not gargoyles because there is a difference, isn't there, between gargoyles and something else just over here. But unfortunately, the gentleman who was building it, um, there's some discussion as to whether it actually opened for a couple of years before he went bankrupt or whether just the shell was sold to Aberystwyth University. But I believe it was 1875 that this became the property of the college and became the old college, which is a beautiful place to study, actually. So here we are outside Pudding, which is my friend Rhiannon's shop in uh, Eastgate Street in Aberystwyth. She makes lots and lots of beautiful brownies and uh, she has lots of lovely produce. She's got things like the Tregrois waffles, she's got the Penlawn beer, um, lots of other delicious things on offer. Now and very shortly, Ian and I will be indulging in these. We have here a dream cake, which is layers of cheesecake, Biscoff pieces and brownie. And Ian has gone for the brownie with the Tregrois waffle pieces. Tregrois waffles are made towards Flandersil, um, have been for a long time, but they're just starting to get some sort of bigger recognition and they're absolutely delicious. So very shortly, we will no doubt cut to us eating these. Consume our lovely goodies. I've got to say that dream cake is exceptionally nice. The brownie is lovely and moist and the cheesecake just complements it beautifully. And the Biscoff is always onto a win if you've got Biscoff. Now this is a bit of a revelation. This is from a company called Welsh Craft and it's apple and elderflower juice. Um, and as I mentioned, Rihanna told me that they're based near Newcastle Emlyn uh, and they have things like they have their own bees that they use to make honey to go in the drinks. That is an, it's just purely apple and elderflower juice. It's absolutely delicious. How's your brownie? Amazing. Yeah, amazing. Excellent. Um, now just over here is Aberystwyth Pier. Aberystwyth Pier used to be significantly longer, but in the 20th century there was a massive storm. Seems to be a recurring theme for Cardigan Bay and it lost, I think it was 200 foot of the pier at the end. But the pier lives on. Uh, when I was in my youth, I used to go partying in Pier Pressure, which is the nightclub in there. It's got various eateries and of course an arcade which is an essential at the seaside <laughs> so here we are with a rather iconic view of Aberystwyth we've got the funicular railway just in the background which I'm hoping to convince the um, Hublets that that hill over there is known as Constitution Hill and at the moment I don't believe the funicular railway is running so we will be walking up there to hopefully give you some beautiful views of Cardigan Bay and probably some moaning from a certain teenager. It is running. It is running. It's hard to tell, they move so slowly. It is running, I can see it. I can see it. So that's really good news. That means we are not dragging children up Constitution Hill. Um, although I did think Black Mile might be ice cream, but never mind. Um, Aberystwyth actually had some form of habitation since the Mesolithic, sorry, I have to go very slowly with that word, the Mesolithic period. Then there was a Bronze Age settlement 
um, and it's been contested. There is a thought that when Llewellyn the Great changed from being the Prince of Dehebar towards being Llewellyn the Great of the entirety of Wales, that Aberystwyth played a key part in that. So there is lots of history around the Welsh language here. The National Library of Wales is based here. Lots of Welsh associations are based here. Um, Aberystwyth University is here. It is a real cultural focal point of Wales. So this just here is Aberystwyth Bandstand. And I'm sorry, it is a recurring theme, but this is the second bandstand due to a storm. I can't remember if it was 2013, 2014, the worst storms to hit Aberystwyth in a very, very long time hit. And unfortunately, they destroyed the bandstand. These pillars that you can see are actually part of the original bandstand. But we have a very new, very stylish bandstand and it is in use for lots of events and so on. It keeps the music alive on the seafront. I remember coming here and seeing Punch and Judy and things like that when I was a kid. <laughs> oh, and Mr. Hubnut would like me to point out that this beautiful canopy looks like Madonna. I'm just going to leave that where it is. So we're here outside the county hall. This building is no longer used by the county council. If you want to get married or if you want to register a birth or a death or anything, the offices are now outside of town. But when the hublets were born, this is where I registered them. And when I was doing a bit of research for this video, I discovered something quite relevant to our family. So this wasn't always a county hall either. It used to be the Queen's Hotel. Now, my family business was the Queen's Hotel, and I didn't know till yesterday that this was the Queen's Hotel. So the Hublets not only had the Queen's Hotel as a huge part of their life, but it's also where they were registered. This is also, you will probably recognize this building, despite the scaffolding, because it featured in Hinterland, or a Gwyll, which was a huge detective series on television. And Mr. Hubnut would just like me to mention that he was in it when they were filming in Devil's Bridge. <laughs> Did you just give the camera a little look then? Oh yeah. You gave the camera a little look. Yeah. So yeah, this is where the Hublets were registered. And this is the Queen's Hotel. It is undergoing massive refurbishment at the moment. And the lovely thing is, it's going to be known as the Queen's Apartments. So it's going a little bit back to its history, but another stunning building. So this is Keredig Young Museum. It was established in 1972 by a local historical group. In 1998, it was taken over by the council. It's based in an Edwardian theater and the collection that it has focuses on local history, local geology, uh, everything about the local area. It's really lovely and unusual to visit. Lots and lots of little bits and pieces. And also it has a superb cafe as well. You can get some beautiful drinks and sandwiches and salads and so on in there. So definitely worth the visit, Kerrigo Museum. The one event that it did that I missed out on that I was gutted about was it did an overnight stay with a um, showing of gremlins. I'd have loved to have taken the Hublets to that. So maybe when things get a bit more normal, they might do things like that again. We shall see. So here we are outside Paprika, which is one of our favorite eating places in Aberystwyth. It's a Hungarian restaurant, and I believe they started up last year. So during the uh, lockdowns and everything, they've done extremely well to keep going now, one of the things that they do is a £9.50 mean meal deal where you get three courses and a drink. And the drink is it's really special. It's like a lemonade. Ian is clutching a raspberry lemonade today, which I can't eat because I eat, drink, because I'm unfortunately allergic to raspberries, so I'm quite envious. Now, what we will do next is we're going to find somewhere to sit and I will show you the wonders of the bag. But this is Paprika, which is a wonderful place to come and eat. So what delights have we got today? Well, there's a piece of bread for, oh, oh yes, your goulash. Mm. Now, as I remember, that has used milk dumplings in it, and that is absolutely delicious. Really, really nice. I've had that what before. What is used milk? That doesn't sound good. Used, E-W-E-S, oh, use not used milk. That would be gross. Used milk, delicious. Mm. And then I have meatloaf with a garden pea stew. Um, it does have a Hungarian name. I'm so sorry. I didn't get the Hungarian name. And then we have something that I've been coveting for quite a while. So they do chimney cakes there. And this one in particular is chocolate chip and Oreo. So we shall be indulging in that very shortly. Yum, yum. So here we go. We're breaking in to the chimney cake. For the rest of the food. Uh, we ate it. I've got to say that meatloaf was beautiful. It was just absolutely full of meat and it was um, 
fried to perfection. It was glorious. The goulash was also good. <laughs> but here we are. Let's have a piece oh, for you. Thank you. Can you now Ooh. multitasking? Can you eat and chimney cake? Mm. So the texture, it's almost, gosh, it's almost somewhere between a, a brownie and a, and a bread. It's very flaky and soft. And the outside's covered in chocolate chips and Oreos. Can't go mm. wrong with that. Mmm, that's lovely. That's ever so nice. Mmm. Although, oh, there's a little bit of lemon in there as well, mm. which is lovely. Now, I will confess, after the goulash and the meatloaf and the grand piece uh, stew, we're not going to consume all this just now. This might be sort of afternoon tea, I think. So yes, but another lovely meal from Paprika. So there is a main, there is a main line that runs into Aberystwyth. Aberystwyth is actually the end of the line. Um, but this is the Vale of Rheidol Railway. This was established in 1902 and it is a steam railway. The interesting thing about this railway is that British Rail stopped using steam on the network in 1969, but somehow the Vale of Rheidol kept tootling on until 1987, is that right? 1987 just tells you how uh, far away we are from everything that this little railway could just be secretly steamed away here for years after the steam age has ended this is a wonderful place to come it's had some major refurbishments recently it goes up to devil's bridge we will be doing a video on devil's bridge at some point in the near future because i know those of you that are hubnut fans have seen a lot of it but want to know a little bit more about the place so we'll tell you a little bit more about Devil's Bridge. But again, they do lovely events here. The Hublets and I came to see Santa Ooh. on the, the Vale of Rydell Railway. And um, it was just wonderful. Mrs. Claus came on the train and she told the children a story. And they had personalised gifts. It was like, oh, is this Theo? And, you know, Theo, you're this old now. It was absolutely spot on. And I think you got a mince pie and mulled wine, if memory serves correctly. So definitely somewhere that's worth a visit and if you'd like to know more about this <laughs> railway oh. <laughs> there's a video on my channel that you can watch so search for Was a bale of that Rydal a gratuitous Hobnut. plug oh yeah he it. actually did tell me to say that shall i go back to the camera side now oh he can't help himself oh, oh he looks so sad so as we walk around avarice i've realized what a cultural center it is of course you've got the art center on the outside of town um I went to see Boy George there when I was heavily pregnant with um, one of the Hublets. I can't remember which of the two, but oh, and I went to see Judge Jules there. So you've got quite a contrast there of the sort of artists that they have there. But whilst we're walking around town, there's also a uh, theatre Arad Gorch, and there's another theatre just over here. Uh, so yeah, as a cultural place, it's a wonderful place to be. We just stood in front of these tombstones, which were moved to make this lovely communal space. But Aberystwyth, it's a funny little place, again, hidden away and a little hidden gem I think so well worth a visit thank you very much for watching guys I hope you've enjoyed this video and we will see you again soon in I'm not sure if it's going to be a tasting video or another Miss Hubnut does West Wales type video that sounded dodgy uh not like that yeah okay I'm gonna leave that there thanks guys and I'll see you again soon bye